Do you want to find the secrets of coding in Unity? Then you've come to the right place. I'm Adrian and welcome to Redefine Gender. In this series, we will learn how to give life to your ideas using Unity and C Sharp. If you are new to Unity and you want to start from scratch, I recommend you my live stream called Unity Basics 2021, which you can check right here. In this video, you will find out what are scripts, how to create them, how to get them executed, what's reusability, and a little something extra. So if you're interested in this, stay tuned. Before we can look into scripts, we need to understand how a game gets executed and how it works. Basically, almost every game has the same sequence, initialization, the update loop, and the ending phase. In the initialization, we have the scene creation, the NPC instantiation, and other props, and also the player. In the update loop, we have the player getting the player input, updating movement, updating AI, and more. And in the last phase, which is usually done in the modern game engines automatically, for example in Unity, it cleans up everything to make the game exit properly. So what exactly is a script? Well, a script is just a text file containing code instructions that can be understood by Unity. Unity uses a language called C-sharp, and if we write the instructions in C-sharp, then Unity will understand what we want the engine to achieve. In your empty project, right-click and select Create C-sharp script. This is the most common way to create a new empty script. Now, when we have the script created, you'll notice that it's not empty. In fact, Unity fills it with some predefined code. But what does it mean? For this, we need to open the code with our editor of choice. So this is the script. First, I want to point out that Unity creates a container for our script with the same name as the script. This is called the class, but for simplicity reasons, we'll call it a code container. Inside the class, we have two things, variables and functions. Whoa there, two new concepts. Of course, we have functions and we have variables. Let's start with functions since Unity already provides two of them in our default script. Functions are containers of code that make sure, when called, that they get their code executed. So why does Unity provide us two default functions already in a created script? Well, it's simple. They map perfectly to the game's stages. First we have the start, and then we have the update loop, which happens every single frame, be it 60 frames per second, 120 or more. So the question now is, are there any other default functions that we should know of? Yes, there are a lot of them. In this episode we will not discuss about them, but in future ones we will definitely dive into them and see what they are doing. Ok, so now we created the script, then what? Is it working? No, it's not working, of course it's not working because it's in the project folder. Think of the project folder as your toolbox. If you have a tool, let's say a screwdriver sitting idle in your toolbox, is it in use? No, of course it's the same with scripts, so we need to take them out of the project folder and put them in the scene. But we cannot just drag and drop the scripts into the scene, we need to attach them to particular objects. To make a script work, it needs to be attached to an object that is in an open scene. Let's quickly create a cube. I'll go to game object, 3D object, cube. Now we have a cube in the scene. All we need to do is drag and drop the script onto the cube. And if I select the cube, in the inspector we'll see that the script got attached to that particular object. You can also see that there are other components to this object. And these are some of the default components that Unity provides. For example, all objects in the scene have the transform component. The transform component contains the position, x, y, and z axis, rotation, and scale of every object. If the object is a visual one, like in this case a cube, it also contains the mesh filter and the mesh renderer. And in this case, it contains our script as well. How can we reuse a script? Well, that's quite simple. We just create a new object, let's say a sphere. We can move it around a little and run and then drag and drop the script to this one. So if I select the cube or the sphere, you'll notice that the same script got attached to two different objects. Currently, I'll delete the sphere because we only need one object. Probably now you have tried running the game and see that nothing happens. Well, it's normal. The script is in the game, is attached to an object, it gets executed, but it doesn't have any code that changes in any visual way, so we can determine if it works or not. Let's proceed and add a new code instruction called debug log, 
which will print in our console the text we input here. And I'll write hello world since this is the most default text. Do not forget that every instruction in C-sharp needs to end with semicolon. If you run out the script, you'll notice that in the console says hello world. This means that it worked and it was called once the script got initialized. But what happens if we move the code from here, I'll just copy paste the code here and remove the code in the start. Of course, you have to save every single step. And now, if I try to run this, since the code gets executed every single frame, we'll notice that it just spawns hello world every frame of the game. Tip here, by putting debug logs in your script, you make sure that you can see where, where the code is executed and where the code is not executed. So this is a, a good way to figure out what's wrong with your scripts. Let's look now at some common problems that the game developers are faced when making scripts. The first common problem that I want to point out is for getting a semicolon in the code. And this is quite easy to see because the console will provide an error and Unity won't allow us to play the game. As you can see, when I'm trying to play, it says all compiler errors need to be fixed. This is a compile error and usually compile errors don't allow you to even start the game. So how can we fix it? Well, it's simple. If we just double click it, it will show us where in the code is the problem and even it will show us exactly, it will highlight the exact place where you have to put it. And now if I just add it, of course, the code will continue to work. Second mistake is forgetting to attach a script to an object and then looking for why is it the script not running. The third mistake is putting the code in the wrong location and expecting it to run as, as we would like it to be. For example, if a code that needs to be in the update loop, which happens every frame, gets in awake and it runs only once, while well, we want the code to run uh, every single frame. So that's, for example, an issue. Putting the code somewhere else can lead up to other issues while we work on our code. So for example, if I want this code to be executed every frame and instead I have it in the start, we'll notice that it happens only once. So putting the code in the correct location, so of course moving it around and putting it here, it will lead us to what we wanted initially for our script to be. This is it for this episode. I hope I got you hyped by, to learn Unity and C Sharp especially. So if you're interested in this, consider subscribing and also check out my live stream because that's where I do the Unity basic stuff. I'm Adrian and I'm signing out.